Andy House would like to introduce the story, Ms. Tula, based on the true Vietnamese story. Part 1. The Meeting Hoang Du, with a romantic personality, likes to travel here and there to spend time, to be happy. However, since more than this year, Hoang Du fell into a miserable situation. Had to pledge all his houses, his business to do business, so his dream of turning off the fire, and forced him to find another way of doing business, by going to the long distance trade. The vehicle that Hoang Du likes the most is the train, because he could lean back in his chair, let the train run, not to be annoyed at times when it stopped picking up passengers like a bus. He bought tickets to Hue, but when he got to Cam Ran, he changed his mind. He thought why he didn't go down to Phu Yen or Bin Din to enjoy a trip. While visiting this place and there, he had a chance to visit some places that long time he still dreamed of. So when the vehicle arrives at Tu Tri Station, Hoang Du gets off. He gave the ticket to an old lady who was fumbling for a ticket to board the train and told the ticket collector, This is my aunt. She will go instead the rest of the way. He gave the ticket collector a pack of cigarettes, so he sympathized for the old lady to climb up. The old woman was surprised by the kindness. She was going to thank him, but he was lost in the crowd. Hoang Du asked the cyclo driver to find a nearby town who quickly said, There was a big town nearby, and it is very crowded. There are many spacious and comfortable rooms. Seeing him friendly, Du asked, Is there any places? Have fun. Pubs, or? He squinted. I don't like drinking. Just want to find a place where people confide. Is there any places there? The guy who ran the cyclo squinted his eyes, looked at Du and answered quickly. You knocked on the right door, sir. I am the native here. He was running around for a while, finally stopping at a house with a fence around it, with an obscure garden inside. This is not a pub, nor a brothel. It's just a private address for someone I know. Only her acquaintance is welcomed. This place has plenty of people to talk to. As long as you give board and want to go. You tell the mistress to call to Loon that she calls me to take you right away. Well, you can suggest how long you can stay. He smiled heartily when he accepted the amount of money that was twice the price of others. When he left, Du walked straight into the yard. The garden was wide. No one here but he heard the sound of a person crying. The cry of a girl. He blurted out and paused and looked around. In front of him, a girl dressed in white clothes was sitting at a lake. Her shoulders were trembling with a cry. Ho Wang Du did not intend to break her privacy. But because he couldn't find anyone else, he had to ask. Excuse me. At this time, the girl looked up and turned around. What a beauty. Her beauty makes Ho Wang Du dumbfounded. He blurted out. You're so beautiful. When she saw Hoang Du, this girl panicked, stood up and started running. He called, Hey miss. But she turned behind the dense canopy of trees. Just then, he heard someone ask, How can I help you, sir? Hoang Du looked to his left and caught a 50-year-old woman. But beauty was still looked after, dressed nicely. He spoke up. I... I find a place where I can. The woman grinned at the guest. If you find a place to have fun and rest, you find the right place. Are you brought by Tulum? Oh, yeah, and I also. You can rest assured. You tell me that you are a regular guest so you will be given a nice reception, please. She walked towards the girl who had just run away. Hoang Du was put into a private room. Small room but beautifully decorated. 
in one corner of the room. Two clean white pillows were placed on a wide bed with a straight mattress. Please sit down. Then the girls will offer tea. Need any wine? Beer? Western wine? Japanese wine? Chinese wine? This place only receives familiar guests brought by prestige termites. Does not receive guests looming. You don't have to worry about the price. When you are satisfied then pay as you like. After saying that, she turned inside and called out. Look. Come here to receive guests. She had to call for the second time to respond. Then a girl appeared. At first glance, Ho Wang Du shouted, It's you. The hostess was surprised. Did you know this girl? Ho Wang Du waved his hand. No, no. Earlier I saw her sitting by the lake. The woman said as ordered, You have to have fun with my guest. This is special guest, clear. She introduced in detail. This is Tula. Also known as La Tu. And especially, there's a special name. Tu Sao. Sao in Vietnamese meaning is sad. That implies that Tula is a girl who always shows sadness. Despite her joke, the girl named Tula still had a less happy face. Looks like the sound of sobbing in the lake just now is still lingering. The hostess must yell. Fresh up. Your face always looks like a funeral. At this moment, the new girl forced a smile to greet the guests. Seeing that the mistress turned to walk away. But did not forget to repeat again. Be careful. If I hear this guy complain. You know what will happen. Waiting for her to leave. The girl started to hug her face and cry. Ho Wang Du worried. What's wrong with you? The girl was about to say something. But perhaps the emotion in her heart was stronger. So she burst into a louder cry. Du did not know how to react then suddenly heard a shriek of the owner Fu Wang Quan. Son of the bitch. You. Drag her out into the backyard to put her head on the fire ant nest. So she knows what is stubborn, quarrels me. Some of her juniors came out. Du put his hand to stop. I like this girl, although she's stubborn. This is the person I need. Seeing that, the mistress Fu Wang Quan softened her voice. You are so kind, so I give her to you. If there is anything unsatisfied, keep telling me. This time, Du was more active waiting for her to leave. He looked straight at the girl asking, Maybe you have a sad. I'll just sit and talk, not doing anything. Don't worry. The girl quickly wiped her tears in panic. Don't, don't. Please forgive me. I just... The embarrassed girl is very poor. Maybe afraid of being punished. He reassured. Okay, actually. I only need one person to talk to. So you wash your face. We sit here talking. At this time, she seemed to be calmer. Thank you. Actually, maybe. Keep calm, please. I just said. Unexpectedly, the girl leaned her head on Huang Du's shoulder. Her voice touched but did not cry. Thank you, sir. Actually, this is the first time I know what a male body is. He was bewildered. What do you mean? I'm still a girl. I was sent here to pay a pretty big debt. Because my parents borrowed and lost money in doing business. I have been here for more than a week. But I am still sick so they cannot force me to receive guests. Today is the first time. Fortunately I met you. Ho Wang Du touched. For you. Maybe I... Du has not said all the sentence was blocked by her. Please don't refuse me. It would be better for me to give myself to you than to the evil monsters here. Okay. You just do whatever you want. According to them, I only need to consent to receiving guests. Then my debt will be erased. And then... Guess what she meant, Du took her hand and said quickly. Don't think so. I won't do anything today. 
I want to get you out of here. So you tell me, how much money does your family owe them? She looked at Du as if she didn't believe his words. After a while, she answered quietly, Two gold tree. Hoang Du blurted out, A human life with only two gold tree, huh? He took off from his neck, a big and heavy necklace. I did not carry much cash, so I kept this thread temporarily. It weighed two in pure gold. Called the landlady here. I'll talk to her. The girl hesitated. Then Du said, Well, let me meet her and solve it. He stood up and went inside. Later, Du said excitedly, Although there was a bit of trouble because they saw her as a gold mine to exploit, but I finally succeeded. This, the dead note, is synonymous with your freedom. Dear Miss Dula, while holding her hand to get her out of the house, Du joked, From now on, you are merely Miss Tulirla Du. You can't bring the name to Sao anymore. She lowered her face and smiled. For a long time, she was startled. Damn, I forgot. Where do you sleep? Ho Wang Du laughs. No problem. Anyway, find another place. They went in front of a big village house. And suddenly she said, Beside a family home, there's an inn. I think you will ask. They will agree. This is also my acquaintance's home. They know my house. My information. So you can rest assured to let me go home alone for my parents to celebrate. I promise not to hide it. Do laughed. Did you think I was accompanying you to guard you? Then the lady, to Sal. It's just that I'm afraid they will make you hard. Now you have the right to go anywhere. But how do I? Pay my debts? Du laughed again. I do not need this debt. So you don't have to worry about what to pay. Think of it as a gift from me. Can't you? But... Or do you want to go back to the place just now? The girl panicked. No. No. She clutched his hand tightly. As if afraid of the guy handing her over to the old place. Hoang Du must calm his voice. Just kidding. Now I listen. Rent a room here. Do I have to say, your acquaintance? She was happy. You keep saying that you are Tu Li's friend when you need to speak. If not, just ask to rent a room. This place is a decent place. So you can't find a confidant. Hoang Du narrowed his eyes. Only Miss Tussau deserves to me to confide. She was nostalgic for a while to leave. But before leaving, she even made an appointment. Can you see me tonight? You just come here. She hesitated. I don't get into the house. Afraid that people misunderstand girls but go to private rooms to find a guy. Or, when I come, I will stand by the yard and do screaming out. Hoang Du nodded. Okay. Tula walked quickly and kept looking back and forth several times before going away. Du reluctantly entered and asked to rent an inn. The reason why he was not so excited was because he thought it was a mediocre place. But when he came in and was agreed to rent, then he was surprised by the luxurious elegance of the room. Better for Du. His room has a window overlooking the yard. In his heart, he suddenly missed the girl who had such pitiful circumstances. So during the whole night he was impossible to sleep. That night Tula kept the promise. Came to wait at the yard. Before she could make the sound of the owl. Du appeared from the big banyan tree. Du confessed. I could not sleep, I had to stand here to cool. At that time she was not as shy as in the morning. On the contrary, she was both bold and strong, and dragged Du's hands to the back of the house. The two of them sat in a slightly dark corner. She explained, There are many my acquaintances here, so be careful. 
She took out a piece of writing paper and handed it to Du. This is my own doing. Please accept. Hoang Du interrupted her. If you still call me sir, I don't accept it. She changed her voice. Sir. Well, you. If you allow. Hoang Du took the paper, had to put it close to his eyes and tilted his head out of the canopy to get a reading light. What's this? Ho Wang Du read fast and uttered that made Tula startled. Be quiet. Du repeated. What are you doing? Her voice dropped. My life is saved by you. I voluntarily offered. I'll just take it and I'll stay here waiting for you to get back from work. I hope you don't decry me. The paper that Du just read is consent to be a wife of Tula voluntarily asking to be the wife of Du. She explained more. My family is poor, but my debt is too big. I have nothing to pay for. Hoang Du seriously interrupted his voice. Did you do that to turn out my job just for self-interest? Tula embarrassed. Sorry, I don't dare. I just thought. Then suddenly she collapsed. Please don't spurn me. My life is nowhere to be dreamed about. So I hope you will be considerate. Ho Wang Du's turn is up. Behold, please don't. Ho Wang Du softens his voice. All right, sit up. She obeyed and kept looking at Du as if waiting for consent. For a moment, he nodded. Okay, but I'm a romantic guy. There's no career. Only you'll have to regret it later. Tula overjoyed. Many thanks. Hoang Du joked to break the tension. I am Hoang Du. If the husband's name is unknown, why can you become a wife? Maybe so happy. Tu did not keep her mind. Hugged and kiss him. The romantic life of Du passed through many relationships. But perhaps there is no strange feeling when being close to a girl like this now. He tried to hold back but his mind seemed to be in turmoil. All the possibilities of resistance were lost. When it was time to self-control, Du suddenly realized that he had turned into an appropriator. He panicked. I, I don't intend. Her voice sulked. It turns out that you still despise. Still criticizing me. Du continued to close the role. Another night, the beautiful moonlight of the night made Hoang Du's waiting to be boring. Although he waited until more than two hours. She had an appointment at 9 o'clock, but now it was over 11 o'clock at night. Dating has been four times but Tula has never been late. Yet this is something that has definitely happened. Looking up at the night sky, there had begun to be clouds of dark clouds beginning to obscure half of the moon, signaling a heavy rain would come. Just bored and worried, Du walked to the inn room. From the back of the communal house, he walked to the inn less than a few hundred steps, but Du had to go for a long time to come, because of his heavy and frustrating steps. When he got back, he heard the landlady talk to someone about a house fire. The other said, Deserved. In the past, Huang Kwan had to be burnt to death. The landlady sighed and said, Say is true. But the story of the place that is not so simple. Today the fire is a sign of a bad thing. The other asked in surprise, Why did you say that? Or does Huang Kwan have any disgust with you? The hostess sighed again. On the contrary, I'm sad for her. For who? Tula. Do you miss that little girl? The other woman nodded. Remember, the beautiful child. Mr. San's daughter. She was my niece. The other seemed to want to ask more. But the landlady wanted to avoid it so she went inside. Du had been listening to the story just now. He waited for the innkeeper to come in before asking. You said Tula is your niece, right? Look at Du, the innkeeper surprised. What did you say? I talk about Fu Wang Quan. When did you come there? 
just yesterday. She rolled her eyes and looked at Du. What did you do there? Ho Wang Du thought she was not in the normal mind. Just for fun. The women are almost the same, always thinking that men visit bars are bad. She shook her head and said, I have no reason to criticize that story. I just want to ask if you normally don't stop by a place just for beggars and those wild dogs that stay there. Outraged, Hoang Du seriously said, You should respect others a bit. Perhaps she knew she was too vocal. So the landlady softened her voice. I apologize to you. I just want to say, the place called Fuang Quan today is just a wild house. After the fire a few years ago, due to being a desert house, no one is living. <laughs>